Elon Musk's Starship can now slash lunar mission costs by hundreds of dollars per kilogram with its fully reusable design and massive payload capacity. It's the fastest path to making moon infrastructure economically realistic. But here's what nobody saw coming. While SpaceX was perfecting rockets, China's Chang'e 6 mission already returned samples from the moon's far side containing CI chondrite grains, the rarest meteorite type loaded with water. Why does this matter? Because China also operates the only Earth-Moon L2 communication satellite, demonstrated in-orbit refueling, and plans to land astronauts before 2030. So who's actually winning this race? Let's dive right in. The Chang'e 6 mission landed in one of the most untouched places in our solar system, the South Pole Aitken Basin on the moon's far side. This crater is ancient, formed billions of years ago, and it's been collecting debris from space ever since. When Chinese scientists examined the returned samples under microscopes, they found something extraordinary among thousands of dust particles, seven tiny fragments of olivine that didn't match anything from the moon or Earth. These grains came from CY chondrite meteorites, the rarest type in existence. Less than 1% of meteorites found on Earth are CI chondrites. Why? Because they're soft, crumbly, and packed with water and volatile materials. They typically don't survive impacts. Yet somehow, these fragile fragments survived on the moon and stayed preserved for billions of years. This is the first time CI chondrite has ever been confirmed on the lunar surface. What does this tell us about what else might be hiding in that dust? Here's where it gets interesting. The grains appear to have melted during impact and then cooled extremely fast, locking in their chemistry like a time capsule. This suggests the moon might actually preserve these fragile materials better than Earth does. Our planet has weather, oceans, and active geology constantly erasing evidence. The moon has none of that. It's a museum of solar system history, and China just found proof that water-rich asteroids bombarded it early on. If these rare fragments make up a larger portion of lunar material than scientists thought, the moon could be sitting on far more water than anyone calculated, but that's not the only water source up there. Scientists analyzing Apollo samples decades ago noticed something odd. Lunar soil contained way too much nitrogen and other volatiles to be explained by solar wind alone. Where was it coming from? The answer turned out to be right above us. Earth has been leaking its atmosphere into space for billions of years. Our magnetic field doesn't seal everything in. Instead, it funnels particles outward along field lines that reach the moon. Atoms and molecules from our atmosphere drift through space and settle into lunar dust. The moon has been catching Earth's breath for eons, and because there's no weather to wash it away, it's all still there. This means the lunar surface holds a geological record of Earth's atmospheric changes stretching back billions of years. Could studying that dust tell us things about ancient Earth we can't learn any other way? This brings us to why everyone's suddenly racing back. Science is fascinating, but money moves faster. The moon holds uranium, potassium, phosphorus, water ice, platinum group metals, and one resource that's caught serious attention, helium-3. This isotope is incredibly rare on Earth, but exists in lunar soil from billions of years of solar wind bombardment. If fusion energy ever becomes viable, helium-3 could power it cleanly. That makes the moon potentially worth billions. Seattle-based startup Interloon, partnering with industrial manufacturer Vermeer, is already building an electric lunar excavator specifically designed to extract helium-3. Their prototype can process 100 metric tons of lunar soil per hour. They're planning a 2027 mission to confirm concentrations with a pilot mining plant targeted for 2029. Think about that timeline. We're not talking about distant future speculation. Companies are building hardware right now. Pittsburgh-based Astrobotic is developing the Griffin 1 lander to deliver rovers built by California's Astrolab for surface analysis. Houston's Intuitive Machines is creating the Nova Sea Lander for NASA's PRISM program, studying lunar soil and rock. NASA's already tested mining hardware on the moon this year. The Prime 1 experiment used Honeybee Robotics Trident Drill, which successfully drilled into lunar surface and extracted samples. The infrastructure is coming together piece by piece. This is where SpaceX changes everything. 
Starship's massive payload capacity combined with full reusability could slash launch costs by hundreds of dollars per kilogram. Previous lunar missions cost tens of thousands per kilogram. If Starship overcomes its early testing challenges, it transforms the economics completely, suddenly delivering large-scale mining equipment, habitats, and factories to the moon becomes realistic instead of prohibitively expensive. And Musk's vision goes beyond mining. He's floated the idea of building satellite factories directly on the lunar surface using a mass driver, essentially an electromagnetic railgun that accelerates AI-powered satellites to lunar escape velocity and launches them into space without rockets. No fuel needed. No atmospheric drag. Just electromagnetic acceleration in one-sixth Earth's gravity. Manufacture satellites using lunar resources and robot labor, then fling them into orbit. If this system became self-sustaining, it could scale exponentially. We're talking tens or hundreds of terawatts of power generation per year. The kind of output associated with civilizations beginning to harness meaningful fractions of their solar system's total energy. That's the jump from a Type 1 to Type 2 civilization on the Kardashev scale. But here's the problem. Musk faces. China's not waiting for revolutionary technology. They're building systematically, step by step, and they're ahead on execution. At a Senate confirmation hearing on December 3rd this year, Jared Isaacman laid it out bluntly. The United States must return to the moon before its rival and establish a permanent base to evaluate economic, scientific, and national security value. He warned, if we fall behind, if we make a mistake, we may never catch up. The consequences could shift the balance of power here on Earth. The next day, the House Committee on Science, Space, and Technology held a hearing titled Assessing China's Space Rise and the Risks to U.S. Leadership. When experts were asked if NASA could realistically return to the moon before China, the answers were devastating. No, I am very pessimistic. Worried, maybe. One expert summed it up. No possible way with the present plan. China's lunar program, named after Chang'e, the moon goddess, launched in 2004 with a clear three-phase structure, uncrewed exploration, crewed landings, and lunar base construction. Over two decades, they've methodically executed that plan through Chang'e, one through six. They've logged three major achievements no one else has. The world's first uncrewed sample return from the far side, successful in-orbit refueling demonstration in geostationary orbit, and operation of the only communication satellite at the Earth-Moon L2 point. That L2 position is crucial. It sits 65,000 kilometers beyond the Moon, where Earth and lunar gravity balance, allowing a spacecraft to maintain position with minimal fuel. It's the perfect relay point for far-side missions. China's already there. They've completed major preliminary design work for their crewed program. The Long March 10 rocket, the Mengzhou spacecraft, the Lanyu Lunar Lander, the Wangyu spacesuit, and the Tansuo Lunar Rover. Ground infrastructure, tracking networks, and landing zones are under accelerated development. Their timeline for landing astronauts before 2030 remains unchanged. Meanwhile, Artemis, NASA's program to return humans to the moon, was originally scheduled to land astronauts by the end of this year. That deadline has slipped repeatedly due to technical and budgetary challenges. The U.S. is actively pursuing solutions, including potentially simpler lunar access approaches hinted at by SpaceX and Blue Origin, but nothing's confirmed yet. The gap is real, and it's widening. Even if China lands astronauts first, they still face technological hurdles. Limited launch vehicle availability compared to their growing satellite needs remains a bottleneck. Many experts see reusable rockets as the essential breakthrough, which is exactly what SpaceX is developing. So the question becomes, can American innovation in reusability overcome China's head start in execution? Or will steady, systematic progress beat revolutionary technology that hasn't proven itself yet? So here's what we're looking at. Elon Musk has the most revolutionary rocket system ever conceived. If it works, Starship could transform lunar economics overnight, making large-scale operations affordable for the first time in history. The mass driver factories, the AI satellites, the exponential growth, all of it hinges on Starship proving itself reliable. But China's not betting on breakthroughs. They're executing a plan they started 20 years ago. 
and every milestone hits on schedule. While we're still testing reusable rockets, they've already sampled the far side, demonstrated in-orbit refueling, and positioned communications infrastructure at L2. Their astronauts are landing before 2030, and that timeline hasn't budged. The title promised you'd find out who's winning. The uncomfortable truth? China's winning on execution, America's winning on potential, and potential doesn't count until it's proven. The nation that controls lunar resources first doesn't just plant a flag, they set the terms for everyone else. Mining rights, territorial claims, technological standards. First presence creates lasting advantage. This race determines more than scientific bragging rights. It shapes the economic and strategic balance of the 21st century. And right now, systematic progress is beating revolutionary promises. What do you think? Can Starship close the gap in time? Drop your take in the comments below. If this breakdown added value, hit that like button and share it with anyone following the space race. And subscribe to Space Update 24 hours for the latest on lunar developments, SpaceX breakthroughs, and the competition reshaping our future beyond Earth. Building Starship has always been a race against time, but SpaceX just redefined what's possible. Booster 19 was stacked in just 28 days. That's six times faster than Booster 18's 175-day assembly, even beating Booster 17's three-month record. So what did Elon Musk discover in the V3 design that made this insane speed possible? The answer lies in pure simplicity. Gas manifolds moved outside the booster. Raptor 3 engines stripped of bulky shielding. Everything tucked neatly inside. No more workers crawling through tight steel spaces. How much faster can SpaceX go? Let's dive right in. SpaceX didn't waste a single hour after the Booster 18 incident. While most companies would spend months investigating and redesigning, Elon's team had already anticipated this moment. The V3 design wasn't created as a reaction. It was ready and waiting. This tells us something crucial about SpaceX's development philosophy. They build multiple solutions in parallel, not sequentially. The gas manifold redesign is where the magic starts. Instead of forcing workers to squeeze inside cramped stainless steel chambers to install complex internal systems, SpaceX moved most of the manifold to the outside. Think of it like switching from building a ship in a bottle to assembling Lego blocks. The workers can now see what they're doing, reach every component easily, and spot problems instantly. This single change probably cut assembly time by 40% alone. But here's what most people miss. The Raptor 3 engine transformation is the real game changer. Previous Raptor versions looked like mechanical nightmares, exposed pipes snaking everywhere, bulky heat shielding, external hardware that needed custom fitting. Raptor 3, 